With this movie, the second one in the little short cycling section, we're going to take cycling to the next logical extension, and that is applying it to a character. Now that we know how it works, now that we know how to use the graph editor and work with the curve or spline modifications, it's a perfect chance to go ahead and apply this to a very common function, walking. Let's go ahead and insert a character. I'll choose one of our all-time favorites, Lenny, and choose OK. One of the reasons I'm showing you this character versus creating a new one for you to work with is so that you see how easy it is to work with the content that comes with Anime Studio Pro. Now we've got a couple things to take a look at before we get moving, and I want to explain why I'm going to do the things I am. We can see Lenny's been built around the center of the layer that he's on, or the group. That is a very smart thing to do when you're working with characters so that when you apply motion to a layer, the motion tracking system always is centered on your character as opposed to saying, well, let's have Lenny over here and just build him over here versus the center of your stage or your work area because then the motion tracking, the visual cues, will always be off-center from your character. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down to frame one, make sure my layer translation tool selected keyboard shortcut one, and I'll simply move Lenny over to the corner here. Now you can see we've got a tracking identifier right here that lets us know from frame 0 to frame 1, Lenny has moved this much, that's okay. The rendering always starts at frame 1, not frame 0. And if we had built Lenny in different layers, or he was built in different layers, chances are at frame 0 he's an exploded character, and the bones haven't been translated back. So, just one of those things to deal with on frame 1. Let me expand Lenny. I'll disclose his group here. We'll select the bone layer, so now that we can engage the bone manipulation tool, keyboard shortcut Z, we're going to bend Lenny's legs into a basic type of walking motion. So the front leg I've got going to the back. The back leg I'll go ahead and extend forward and bend that just a little bit. I'll move down the timeline to frame 12, and we're simply going to reverse this order. So I'll just grab that top part of the leg bone for the back leg, same thing for the front leg, Maybe adjust this just a little bit. And then, instead of trying to figure out what to do at frame 24 at one second, I'm going to cheat a little bit and save time. I'll simply highlight the keyframes down on frame 1, advance my timeline to frame 24. These are still selected. I'll choose Copy. And now that I'm at frame 24, according to the time marker, I'll choose Paste. So now we've got a perfect match between frame 24 and frame 1. This is where we will highlight the keyframe at frame 24 for the bones and choose cycle. Our dialog box will go ahead and pop up and in this case I want it to cycle all the way back absolutely to frame 1. I'll choose OK and now we see that we've got this little line going back that points down to frame 1 visual cue that we are now in cycling mode for this. Well what's the next step now? The next step would be to go ahead and animate the layer. So I'm going to come back to frame 1. I'll select my layer translation tool. I'll go ahead and select the Lenny group or Lenny top layer here. We can see we've got our visual cue. And now all the way down at frame 72, 3 seconds, I'm going to go ahead and grab the Lenny layer and simply drag it down here. I'm going to hold the shift key and constrain it to a level or perfectly horizontal movement. And so now when we go ahead and hit the play button, we'll see we've got Lenny walking, but there's a little bit of a problem. Watch real closely, and this is where we need to come into the curves or the graph editor and make a change. The motion or the cycling motion of Lenny's legs is very regular and very predictable but it doesn't seem to match his movement. At the very end of the keyframe and at the very beginning, he slows down. This is a function of the smooth curve interpolation, or tweener, that we looked at in the movie preceding this. So let's go ahead and stop. I'll go ahead and come back to our first keyframe for the layer translation. Select it. And now I'll right-click, or Control-click, and instead of choosing smooth, I'll choose linear. What this does for us, if I come back to graph mode and enable that, is that now from this first keyframe to this last keyframe, 
it's a perfect straight line, which means that it travels, or in this case, the Lenny layer travels at the exact same velocity from the beginning to the end with no smoothing or rounding out of that motion. When we hit play now, Lenny goes ahead and walks, but he walks at the same speed from the very first keyframe to the very last keyframe. So that's how you start engaging cycling into your characters, but there's one step further you can take it, and that is working with actions. We'll cover that in our next movie.